So our next speaker is going to be Wang Yuan Li from uh, Stanford University, and he's going to be talking about the verifying bit manipulations of floating point uh, operations. Also, an input range x. 
Then our goal is to find a small quantity theta such that the precision loss of P with respect to F is smaller, smaller than theta for all increasing lengths. In other words, we want to prove a bound on the maximum precision loss. Here, the precision loss is defined as a well known quantity theta. So, there are several possible ways to solve this problem, and a naive approach is to directly measure the precision loss over uh, every possible input. So, such exhaustive testing method is feasible for single uh, precision point point numbers, but it is not feasible for double precision point point numbers because the number of all doubles is 254, which is huge. I want to note that. Such exhaustive testing method does not work even if the input range is minus one to one, which seems very small. This is because the half of all doubles are concentrated in the interval minus one to one. So in general, the exhaustive testing method is not feasible. But the idea of checking testing every input can be sometimes useful, and I will use this idea in the later part of this talk. And another way to solve this problem is to construct machine checkable proofs manually. So around 2000, John Harrison used uh, Hallett to prove that some of the Intel's uh, algorithms for computing transfer clock functions have a very small error. However, constructing such proofs requires a lot of manual effort, and each such proof can take over a month to construct. At the other extreme, there are several automatic techniques that can solve this problem, but only when uh, fully control operations are exclusively used. And several commercial tools can handle certain feature routines, but to our knowledge, there has been no general technique that can verify mixed code. So now I'm going to talk about how our method can solve this problem. Okay, I'll use this implementation as an example to explain our method. So, by the way, you don't have to read the assumption code. And, yeah, this implementation computes e to the x, and it works as follows. It first takes an input x, and then computes an integer n. Then it uses in letter operations I showed you before to compute 2 to the n in double representation. Then it approximates e to the x by using some point code operations. And here the details are not going to be important. Given this implementation, our goal is to find theta that bounds the, uh, the relative error between e to the x and the output of this binary. So I have to uh, explain how our method computes such theta. And let's start with an easy case, a case when only point code operations are used in a given binary. So in this case, we use the one plus epsilon property to find the attraction of this binary. So what this property says is uh, for any two point point numbers x and y, and for any point point equation, we always have this equation. Here the equation without some script f represents the corresponding real value equation, and the delta variable more dots the running error from this point point equation. And your epsilon is a constant. So this equation means that there is a small neighborhood around the exact result such that the only point result is contained in this small neighborhood. And it also says that the size of that neighborhood is bounded by the constant epsilon. And your epsilon is a constant which is equal to 50 minus 53 if two point point uh, numbers x and y are double precision point point numbers. So this one plus epsilon property has been used in previous verification techniques to model rounding errors, and our method also uses it to abstract point point operations. Precisely speaking, our method computes something called a symbolic abstraction identifies of a given binary P. So for uh, so if the binary P contains only point point operations like this example, its symbolic abstraction A delta X is computed uh, by replacing each point point operation by the corresponding real value operation and multiplying one plus delta terms for each point point operation. Uh, 
then from the one perception property, uh, the A, uh, A delta X becomes a sum abstraction of the actual output PX. For instance, for the above example, the green set obtained from the simulating abstraction becomes an over approximation of the actual output. So, in this way, if a given point point number, a point point, uh, if a given uh, binary contains only point point operations, you can find such uh, simple mathematical function a delta x that abstracts the behavior of the binary. However, in the general case, uh, binary p uses not only point point operations, but also b level operations. In, in this, in, uh, even in this general case, you would you like to compute a simple abstraction of the binary P, colored by yellow. However, it turns out that finding such a simple abstraction over the entire input range is actually difficult. And this is because we abstract fully point operations using smooth functions, as I explained before. But while the results of field level operations are not smooth, so our key idea to solve this problem is to divide the input range into smaller intervals so that on each interval we can do partial evaluation of all the other equations. If, uh, after finding such intervals, we remove all the other equations from the binary by partial evaluation. Then our binaries now consist exclusively of third point equations, so we cannot apply the standard one plus epsilon property to abstract those form operations. In this way, you can find simple mathematical functions a1 to an that abstracts the behavior of the binary on each interval. Since the output of the binary is now expressed by simple functions a1 to an, we now have a simple formula for the precision loss of the binary on each interval, which is f minus ai over f. So a bound on the precision loss on each interval is obtained by maximizing each formula. And you get the final answer by taking the maximum of these optimization results. So this was a big picture for our method. And now, now I'm going to explain our method in more detail. So let's consider a general case when both point point and field level operations are used in a given binary. So in this case, uh, our plan is to reduce this more difficult problem to a uh, more easier problem by dividing the input range into smaller intervals. And we perform this revision in such a way that we can statically know the result of all the level operations on each interval. To give you a concrete idea, let's consider the expressional example. Suppose uh, we are somehow given these intervals and assume that on the interval i minus 1, n is always evaluated to minus 1. If 1 gives us such interval, then we can do partial evaluation of the variables n, z, and w to get the right code, which has no delivery equations. Here the right code uh, is equivalent to the left one by the assumption of the interval i minus 1. And since the right code has no delivery equations now, uh, is symbolic abstraction a delta x can be obtained by simply applying one plus epsilon property. So in this way, uh, if we are given such nice intervals, we can find uh, we can find a simple mathematical abstraction of the binary on each interval. So uh, oh, so our our main problem is now to infer such intervals. And how can you find such nice intervals? So for instance, these are nice intervals for our expressional example, which satisfy the property that on interval i k, n is evaluated to k. And to find such nice intervals, we use symbolic abstraction. So in our expressional example, n is computed by applying the bit level equation bound to x times c. To compute such intervals, we first compute a symbolic abstraction of x times c, which is computed to x times c times 1 plus delta. And this means that the set S 
is an over approximation of the fully contributed result x times c. So, and, and now, uh, suppose for some intellect, the set S is completely contained in the green interval. Then it's clear that for this intellect, uh, n is evaluated to k. So we collect all such inputs and call ik the uh, conservative closure of those inputs. Then obviously, uh, for every input in ik, n is evaluated to k. And so these are the intervals that we want. And we can now compute a bound of the precision loss in the following way. Now let a delta x be a symbolic description of a given binary p on each of i k. Then a bound of the precision loss on i k is computed by solving this optimization problem. And we use mathematica to solve them in our way. Okay, so it seems now that uh, we're done now, but actually there is one more thing to consider. There is some point for numbers like this may not be included in any intervals that we construct it. Uh, so we have such gaps between intervals because we made sound abstractions in constructing those intervals and uh, symbolic abstractions. To give you a, uh, an example of a point for number in those gaps, let's consider a value m. So for these two inputs, we obtain these abstractions of the uh, following point result x times c. So for the left input, n is definitely evaluated to zero because the abstraction of x times c is completely contained in the green interval. Similarly, for the right input, n is evaluated to zero to uh, one. However, for the input one over two c. The abstraction of x times c is not completely contained in any of these two green intervals. In other words, we cannot steadily know whether the fully point result x times c would be smaller or greater than 45. So we cannot determine whether n would be evaluated to 0 or 1. So those kinds of inputs, such as 1 over 2c, cannot be included in any interval. Now let h be the set of all point point numbers in those gaps. Actually, we in experiment we observed that the size of h is small. So we compute the maximum precision loss on the set h by rule forms. In other words, for each input x in the gaps, we execute the binary to obtain the actual output px and directly measure the precision loss. And this rule form step was completely feasible for our benchmarks. And finally, a bound and the precision loss on the entire input range is obtained by taking the maximum of these results. So this is how our method works. And now let's move on to the case study part. So I will show you results for three uh, benchmarks. Here the expression karma is from a real world simulation engine. And the sign and the log of kernels are from Intel's implementation of C metal library. And I will present the precision loss in terms of all error instead of the relative error because all error is the most commonly used metric to measure rounding errors of numeric values. Here, all error is defined as the number of floating point numbers between two results. For example, if the mathematically exact result is A and our floating point implementation computes the result B, then B is in error by 5 loss because there are five point point numbers between A and B. It turns out that if all error is uh, related to the relative error that we have been using, and we can easily interchange between the two. Now I will show you a subset of our results. So you can first see that the error bounds from our method uh, are very small for most cases. For example, it was 9 ops for the sign implementation, which is very cool because this error value should uh, imply that there can be at most 9 point four numbers between the Intel's result and the mathematically exact result. But for the log implementation, we obtained a large or all error 
over a bump over a small interval in the one, and this shows a limitation of our method, which I will uh, discuss after the next slide. And you can also see that the number of intervals that our method constructs is very small for two implementations. For the long implementation, the number of intervals uh, was big, but it, this was not a problem because our method was able to find all better bounds in a reasonable amount of time. And actually, this result best illustrates the power of our method, is that our method can reduce a very complex problem of boundary precision loss to millions of tractable solved problems. And finally, we observe that the size of the jet is very small for all three implementations. Uh, and these are the graphs for the sign and the log kernel. And here the brown line shows the uh, our error bounds obtained at the obtained at the interval, and the blue dots show the uh, precision loss directly directly measured in the gaps during group testing. And you can see that our error bounds are good because they are only few holes. However, we observe that there is some gap between our error bound and the bound that Intel claims. This result does not mean that Intel's implementations are wrong, but does mean that our abstractions are a bit imprecise and there is some small room for improvement in our method. And let's discuss uh, two main limitations of our method. So, first, uh, it's not guaranteed that our method always generates a small number of intervals. So consider these uh, non-trivial level operations. This weird-looking computation actually gives a good approximation to the inverse square root of x. However, if we apply our method to verify this computation, we end up having in an interactive number of intervals. And second, our error bounds can be uh, sometimes loose, as we saw in the long implementation. And we obtain such loose bounds mainly because the one plus epsilon property sometimes gives an imprecise abstraction of round errors. So, in order to get more precise error bounds, we need to use more sophisticated error analysis technique beyond the one plus epsilon property. And actually, by using some more properties of rounding error, we obtain much better error bound for the log curve. Okay, to summarize this talk, uh, I uh, presented a first systematic method uh, that can verify mixed computations, mixed uh, binaries. And in doing so, I used abstraction, analytical optimization, and testing. And I also demonstrated that our method is directly applicable to real world phone for implementation, such as Intel uh, implementation for transform functions. And this is the end of the talk. Thank you. We have time for a few questions. I actually have one question. So, if I understand correctly, your method does have a manual component, right? Yes. Could you elaborate on what parts of the technique are automatic versus manual? Uh, so, for our benchmark, it is actually fully automatic. But for general cases, it requires some uh, human intervention. And there is one place where we need human intervention. And that is the place where we compute the interval. So, in order to compute the interval, we need to solve some inequalities. And for our benchmark, the, those inequalities are linear. So, we could find them automatically. But for a general case, those equations may not be uh, linear, so so for that case, yeah, we need some human intervention. Yeah. Uh, great work! Thanks so much for a wonderful talk. Um, the examples you showed were code that was handwritten by humans to be accurate. I was wondering if you have any experience looking at the output of tools like Stoke, uh, where a machine has produced implementations um, for performance or accuracy. Uh, so your question is, our method can be applied, can be applied to? Do you have any experience applying it? Yeah, sure. Machine-generated? Sure. We actually verified the stock-generated ex 
for example, project. So you can see the uh, uh, our table. Okay, let's thank the speaker and this concludes the session.